Mm. The has not gotten her. Yep, before we get dressed tomorrow, let's go to bed. Welcome to my kitchen. This is the first cooking video I've ever done. Um, so I'm a little bit nervous, <laughs> but I have so many tried and true recipes that we make in our house over and over and over again in a week that I thought it would be really fun to bring you into the kitchen with me, um, show you some of the ingredients that we use all the time and how we combine them to make yummy, most of the time healthy, snacks, meals, etc. So the first recipe I am going to be showing you is a smoothie recipe. Um, I have the Vitamix uh, 5200 model, whatever that means. Um, this was very much an investment, um, but for me, we make smoothies a lot, I would say almost daily, um, sometimes twice a day. So for us, it was very much worth the price point. Um, but you certainly do not need this blender to make this smoothie. So let's start. First we need, what am I gonna use? I think we'll use oat milk for this one. And because this is going to be a snack for the girls when they come in from the snow, as you will have seen, we have a very snowy, cold day up here in Northern Vermont. So um, Justin took the girls outside so I could have a little bit of quiet time in this shared space to record these videos. So I use Planet Oat, oat Milk. I am not a huge fan of um, dairy, like regular standard dairy milk. I prefer a uh, plant substitute. I don't know if this is focusing or not. There we go. And I'm using the unsweetened vanilla because it gives it just that little bit of flavor without um, being overly sweet. One cup of vanilla oat milk. And you can obviously use any milk that you prefer. And then I am going to just use uh, probably two tablespoons of yogurt. Right now we have this Stonyfield Organic probiotic plain yogurt with whole milk. We typically get a different brand that's more local to us, but when Lily and I went last, they didn't have it. So this is always our backup. So one. And I like putting this in their smoothies because of the probiotics, whether it's a probiotic specific yogurt or not. Um, you know, all yogurt has probiotics and it's so good for their gut health. And with Lily loving <laughs> close to nothing these days, she's a very picky eater. Um, but you know, the typical toddler palate where we have our carbs, um, butter and cheese. All of our meals are a form of butter, cheese, and bread and or pasta put together. So I like to really load up their smoothies with um, things that are good for them without them knowing. Next, I normally will just sprinkle chia seeds in. We always have a little bit of chia seeds. We get these at the bulk store. Uh, we have a health, healthy living market um, in Burlington near us. So I will just, like I said, get these at the bulk store, but you can get these at any grocery store. And these are good for the omega fats fiber and let's see what do I typically do I would say I probably do about 
I might do a full tablespoon of these actually. Let me take a look. Cause I've, like I said, I've never measured this. I typically just sprinkle, but I would say, mm, that might be a lot, but they process in really nicely. I do hmm, just a sprinkle of turmeric because it has really great, I would say if you really want a measurement for this, half a teaspoon, go for half a teaspoon. Sorry for the jangling. Um, and then I do a hefty sprinkling of cinnamon. Cinnamon has great antibiotic properties, so it's really good for just staying healthy. Um, I'm going to do a full banana. I always take the little stringy things off. I don't know why, I know they'll get processed in, but that was one of my things growing up. I hated the stringy things. I went down to like the, you know, the really teeny tiny strings that run down the, I, I would peel every single one off. So it's still a thing for me. <laughs> um, I pre-cut up a Honeycrisp apple yesterday because the girls had a few slices and then they were uninterested. So this is just the Honeycrisp apple. I did not peel it, just in chunks. I am also going to be adding some frozen blueberries. Now I am mostly adding these blueberries for the appearance. It'll give the smoothie, I think it will anyway, um, a nice purple um, coloring, which is a lot more appealing than like a brownie green, which it can sometimes come out as if I don't add something that has a really rich color to it. So it's for appearance. It's so they don't see it and go bleh. So not a ton, just a few. And then I'm going to do a few oats. I think I would probably do, I got all these great measuring cups and spoons from mom and I haven't really used them. So I'm kind of taking this opportunity to test them out. They're a little jangly though. And for anyone curious, she got these at King Arthur Flower, which is local to us. Um, but they have an online store as well. If you're looking for some, I'm actually, gonna, they're very heavy. <laughs> so I'm going to actually disassemble the bunch and I'm going to use a third cup of oats. And then last but not least some spinach and honey, honey, just in case there isn't enough fruit in there to sweeten it, but I'm positive there is because that's all we've put in so far other than spices. So a little spinach, just a handful, however much you want to put in it doesn't really matter. And honey, I have no idea how much I just put in. And then bada bing, bada boom. I might need to add a little more liquid because I put some oats in here, um, but we'll see. It's the beautiful thing about smoothies is once you get blending them, if they look, too thick or too thin, you can adjust by putting in extra ingredients through the top. Here we go. Beautiful purple color so the girls can't look at it and go Ugh. so I'm just gonna pour this in a mason jar cover it up and we will enjoy it when they get them from the snow
I was really planning on that first smoothie recipe I um I say recipe loosely I just throw things together <laughs> so um but I just I knew I had to make one for the girls and um just wanted to get it done and I figured why not share that as well as the chicken pot pie so this broccoli is so close to being passed because I purchased it too early but I'm using it anyway I don't care probably a lot of the nutrients have gone from it but it'll be fine so I have head of broccoli, two carrots, one small onion, some garlic. I do not make my own crust. I do not make my own gravy yet, yet. So right now I use Hanes Homestyle, Heinz, Hanes, Heinz, oh come on. Homestyle turkey gravy. It's just what my mom has always used, and so it's what I use and I like it. Um, and then let me get the pie crust. Okay, and then I just get the Pillsbury pie crust. There's two crusts, one for the bottom, one for the top if you so choose, though I can't remember who it was. And I think it was on my live stream, I mentioned putting stuffing as a top instead of the top crust, which sounds amazing, and I will certainly be trying that soon. Um, but for now, Sticking with Pillsbury. So I'm gonna let this sit out a little bit. They advise you take it out so it warms up a touch so it doesn't tear when you unroll it. Um, and I'll show you how it comes packaged if you aren't familiar. But, so this morning I woke up and I pulled the crock pot out and I threw some chicken thighs that I got, um, I think a couple of days ago at the grocery store. They stock meats that come from a local farm. Lynn, if you're watching this, I am sure you know what I'm talking about. Um, I'm trying to remember what the farm's name is. Misty Knoll. Misty Knoll. So there they are. They've been in for about three hours. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take them out, um, get all the meat off of them, and save the bones for some chicken stock. Love this cutting board. We got this for our wedding. It was something that we registered for, and um, we use it constantly. But it's so big that we can't store it anywhere here. <laughs> so we store it on top of the fridge. surprise there. I'm gonna save the skin for Justin because he loves eating chicken skin. I am not a huge fan unless it's on a chicken wing and it's got a lot of hot sauce on it and it's crispy. That is what I need to enjoy chicken skin. Let's see the meat is falling right off of the bone so it will be very easy to get the meat to pull away, which is lovely. I am a huge fan of, I'm gonna adjust this a little bit. Trial and error, people, this is how it goes. There we go. 
Um, so I'm a huge fan of dark meat myself, which is why I lean towards chicken thighs when I'm making a chicken pot pie. Um, but you can make it obviously with any kind of chicken you prefer. Uh, like I said, I just happen to enjoy dark meat more. I find the flavor to be better. It's a lot more, oh my gosh, it's just, I know you want somebody, I know. So, put all the meat in there with the juices. I know, bud. But do you see how easily it's falling off the bone? I love the crock pot for meat because it just, as long as you don't overcook it and leave it in there for too, too long, it cooks it so that it's so, uh, moist and delicious. Mm. I know, buddy. You might hear a crying dog for the rest of this video because he loves himself any human food, but especially chicken. Look at that. Clean bones. Though I will say part of the cartilage tends to fall off too and that's a little bit crunchy. I try to make sure I pull that away. Actually, Justin's not gonna want that. Pull that away too. The reason I'm using forks is because it's still very hot. Very, very hot. I'm so big. Okay, make sure there are no bone pieces in here. Nope, we are good. There is something to be said for buying meat that is raised well. I try my best to do that as much as possible and if we can't afford it because it is a little bit pricier, we will lean towards a more uh, veggie centric meal. That is just what we do personally. It is not for everybody and not everybody has access to as much fresh farmed food. So I feel very fortunate that where we live, there are so many fantastic options. Romy. For locally raised food. Now, since I don't have a land and homesteading slash raising animals, while it looks like a dream, I do not have the space for it and I do not know that I have the capacity for it because I like to do so many other things, knitting, crocheting, embroidery, among the few. Um, I don't know how I would feel raising animals. So I let the other, I let the professionals do it. <laughs> and, um, the results are always so delicious and beautiful. And I feel like I can really trust where it's coming from. Believe it or not, this is Charlie's favorite meal these days. Yesterday I went, I had one last piece from the last chicken pot pie I made. And anytime I sit down with it, Chicken pot pie for me. Chicken pot pie for me. So I share it with her and really when I say I share it with her, I just let her eat it and I'll get whatever she doesn't want. Clears the plate every time. Every time, which I'm not complaining because I would rather her be eating a nutritious snack like that because this is a snack for me. Um, and that is something that's great about chicken pot pie too is it's not necessarily for us as a family of four two of which being little humans, we don't necessarily go through a whole pot pie in one sitting. So it's really great for leftovers throughout the week for lunches or dinners, because more often than not, we will get done putting the girls down. And if we don't eat with them, it's like grab a box of crackers and some cheese. And that's our dinner. So it is really nice to have this as an option in your refrigerator or in your freezer even. I know, um, I have never frozen one that I have made before because we tend to eat them quickly, but I know mom makes them, freezes them, pulls them out for whenever she needs it. So anyways, 
This is a bit of a labor of love, but I promise you it is worth the time and effort to use meat on the bone. I also think the bone holds a lot of flavor. So anyways, okay, let me clean this up and then we'll get to going. It is snowing so much right now, big fluffy flakes. Now it's time to get our vegetables ready to be chopped up and steamed. This is what I'm looking at outside the window. For my carrots, potatoes, any other root vegetables, I clean it. This really needs to be washed too, but I clean it with a little brush. This is uh, from the brand Good Cook. I picked it up at just our regular old grocery store. It's nothing special. There we go. Just helps to get the vegetables nice and clean. Actually, I think I'm going to have my carrots today. These are not very big carrots. Takes a while. There's probably a simpler way to do this. Would you like a carrot? He's my knitting buddy, he's my cooking buddy. Anytime he can be warm and cozy, or with a full belly. He's my buddy. Can you blame him? I will say I don't have any of these recipes written down. I loosely base all of my recipes off of anything my mom made while I was growing up or any kind of like a homesteading vlog that I've watched where I found a recipe or seen them make something and then I just kind of um, absorb the principles or the, the real bones, if you will, no pun intended, of the recipe and I just kind of play with it from there. Um, so my mom always made chicken pot pie when we were growing up. It is to this day one of my favorite recipes that she's ever made. Um, anytime she brings one up, it doesn't last long. Um, so it was exciting to me when I finally decided to try it. Um, and I was actually inspired by Farmhouse on Boone. Her name is Lisa. She has a YouTube channel. I'm sure if you're watching me, you've heard me mention her before. Um, she just does a lot of like whole food cooking, homekeeping, homesteading. They have cows, they have goats, you know, the whole 10, the whole 10, the whole nine. Um, so anyways, between those, you know, my childhood experience and then watching that video, I finally got brave enough at the end of last year to try it for the first time, and now I don't think I've gone a week without making one. They're simple enough. We always have the ingredients. We always have a huge bag of carrots. We almost always have some kind of a um, green vegetable lying around. Could be green beans, could be, most of the time it's broccoli. Um, even asparagus, I bet, would taste good. I've never made it with asparagus, but I bet it would be yummy. Um, Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts might be a little funky unless you shredded them. That might be good. Um, gravy is something I've started just stocking in our pantry before this recipe. Um, I do have goals, like I said, to someday make my own gravy, to um, make my own pastry, but for now, at this phase in life and where I am mentally, Roma, you've got to stop. Please, please. Um, I'm just really proud of the progress I've made. I find this to be easy enough, fast enough. There's no mental hurdles for me to jump over to be able to make this recipe, which a lot of times that is what keeps me from making a recipe, is the mental hurdle of I've never done it before. I'm going to have to navigate this for the first time with ingredients that I'm not familiar with. All of those things that would otherwise prevent me from making a recipe um, have been addressed or don't exist with this one. So I'm hoping if you've never made a chicken pot pie and you're wanting to, which I know I'm sure many of you have already made a chicken pot pie in your life, but um, maybe this will be inspiration to just, I don't know, give it a go. 
give it a go or make one if you haven't made one in a really long time. Try some new veggies in it. Sweet onion. I tend to use a Vidalia of any kind of a, I don't know if there are any other types of sweet onions, but that's what I use as a Vidalia. I cut it pretty chunky um, because they do cook down. Um, so yeah, cut it pretty chunky. I'll show you. Peeling the skin off of an onion is either so easy or so hard. Sometimes I just take that outer layer of the onion and I just get rid of it like that. Cause it drives me crazy sitting here like having to pick away, like this one's good. There's like a membrane underneath it where it just pulled right away. Other times it's like, Romy, stop buddy. I got nothing for you. Yeah, I see you wagging your tail. I gotta use this chicken for our, for our pie. All right, there we go. Easy enough. I'm gonna use this little corner of the cutting board. I do a whole onion. Excuse me. I enjoy onions. I don't can't believe I'm not crying from cutting that. But I'm not. Best trick ever, when I used to work in a restaurant and they would cut onions, it would be like onion day. I wore contacts. Back then, since then I've gotten LASIK surgery, but um, I used to wear contacts and I was the only one who didn't have tears pouring from their eyes because the contacts like block whatever it is that makes you cry. I don't know. And then there would be days where I'd wear my glasses and I'd be like, no. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna steam those until they are tender. I'm going to add in some sweet peas, add in the gravy, add in our seasonings, mix it all together. So I'll be right back. While I'm waiting for the vegetables to steam, I am draining, I'm just using a can of organic sweet peas. Um, because I am. <laughs> I know you can make your own peas and like do whatever, soak them kind of like beans. I tend to go for canned these days. It's faster, less thought goes into it for me personally. what I just found. Two peas in a pod. Is that not the cutest thing you've ever seen? Just two peas in a pod. just tender um, because they're gonna cook a little bit more obviously in the pie as well. Ooh -wee. Full jar of gravy. I just use one but you can add as much gravy as you want. Obviously you just don't want it to be too moist because then you'll get a soggy bottom. Which, to be truthful, I always get a soggy bottom on my um, chicken pot pie. Which is fine. It's still delicious. Soggy bottom or not. Eat that Paul Hollywood. Justin's gonna be so excited that I'm making this. It is Sunday. Football Sunday, though you guys will be seeing this on Wednesday. But it's just gonna be nice to have a nice warm meal. I'm gonna start preheating the oven to 350. Okay. 
Okay, perfect. So nice and mixed up. So now that we've got the mixture done, let's take these pie crusts out. So for anybody that has never used a Pillsbury pie crust, which I would find surprising, though I hadn't until a few months ago. So this is how it comes. Two rolled up pie crusts. Is there anything easier? I don't think so. Safety scissors. Not too warm, Romy. I'm so sorry for all the crying in this video, y'all. If anything, it's a testament for, testament to how delicious it smells in here. It smells so good right now. I think I've eaten chicken pot pie once a day for the last week because the last chicken pot pie I made, I don't think Justin was in the mood for it yet because I've been making it so frequently. Um, so it was just Charlie and I plugging away at it for lunch every day but somehow I'm not sick of it. So now before I put the ingredients into the chicken pot pie crust, I'm going to salt, pepper, and garlic salt. The mixture, mix it up, do it one more time for good measure. I love black pepper in everything. I love black pepper. Garlic powder. I don't know how much I really just sprinkle over the top. Oh, it's such a squishy sound. <laughs> a little bit more for good measure. Can't ever have too much black pepper in my opinion. I didn't end up adding the garlic cloves in because I've never done that and I don't, I don't know. I don't want to mess with a good thing here. Okay. Now, in you go, my precious. You hear you, Roms. I know you're excited for this. This is going to be one full pot pie. I am here for it. Spread her out. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be delicious. Safety scissors. pinch down along the sides, roll it and pinch, roll it and pinch, roll it and pinch, roll it and pinch. Well, seeing as this is my first cooking video and all Romo has done the whole time is cry at my feet, it seems as though I'm going to need to find a solution for that for our next cooking video. <laughs> I think he might need to have a nice little bone. So, <clears throat> there she is. And now I like to just do some air holes. So I get a nice sharp knife. And I know you can use like a razor blade or something like that. Sorry, my nose is itchy. I think it was the black pepper. <laughs> um, but I tend to just go boop, boop, boop. I make like a little X. Boop, boop, boop. Kind of gives you a direction in which to cut the slices. Boop, boop, boop. And it doesn't work unless you boop along the way. So 
there we have it. Nothing fancy, nothing beautiful. Just a few little scores there to release the steam. And then once the oven preheats to 350, I'll throw it in there for an hour or until I see some bubbling from the outside of the crust and the crust looks like a light golden brown or dark golden brown, whatever. So to review, making a chicken pot pie is as easy as making chicken, steaming vegetables, putting them in a bowl, dumping a jar of gravy on top, unrolling your store-bought pie crusts, assembling all things, and putting it in the oven for an hour. That's not bad, right? Totally doable, especially on Sunday as a meal prep. Just eat it all week long. So for my next recipe, I was gonna make some pumpkin muffins and I use applesauce as a sweetener. And I just realized this applesauce has been in there for a really long time and there's some lovely blue-green mold growing on top of it. I always love when I can look over at my wooden bowl that's normally filled with fruits and vegetables and see that it's getting close to empty because it means that we've eaten all of that fantastic food throughout the week. So it makes me feel really proud. I have a feeling I'll be getting some questions about my apron because I know if I were watching this video, I would want to know about it. I purchased this through Conscious Clothing, I think three, two or three years ago. I have not used it very often, um, but I love it. It is super comfortable. It has these nice deep pockets. I now have a space to hang it down here. It is linen. And, um, so I think I'm going to be using it a lot more often in the kitchen and in the garden. It's hanging right next to my gardening hat. I love the wide X in the back. Super comfy, conscious clothing. I will provide a link below if they still offer it. there you have it my friends my go-to chicken pot pie recipe I will try to write up a recipe for you I think I can do it and I'll link it below or I'll just write it down below so you can copy and paste it into a word document but either way thank you for hanging out with me in my kitchen today and I'll be seeing you again soon now I gotta get to cleaning to the chicken pot pie because um, the crust isn't quite brown enough for me, but there is bubbling coming from inside the pie. So I could definitely pull it out now, but I like a little bit of a crispier crust. Chicken Popeye. Yeah. Is it yummy? Yes, it is. You want to eat chicken Popeye?